Modern scientific method depends on a lot of different techniques and a lot of different ideas. And although generally it does start with some sort of an observation, sometimes it starts with a hypothesis or a theory. And in some cases when observations or any kind of a data is not available, one of the ways we try to explain things or try to learn about the universe is through various simulations based on extremely complex supercomputers. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about one such very interesting simulation that might have helped us answer a lot of questions about supermassive black holes and centers of galaxies. The simulation that you see right here that was recently created by some of the scientists from the paper you can find in the description below. And in this case they were able to quite accurately simulate an extremely precise version of a typical galaxy and specifically the supermassive black hole moving in the middle of such galaxy. And all of this was done with quite an unprecedented level of detail, something that we've never been able to do before. And so let's actually discuss what's happening right here, what was discovered and I guess why it's important as well. First of all, when it comes to supermassive black holes and when it comes to a lot of observations in regards to these black holes, we're still sort of in the infancy of the field. A lot of new advances have been made in the last decade, but we're still learning about these objects and still trying to understand what's happening in the center of various galaxies. As a matter of fact, galaxies and galactic centers are some of the most mysterious but also some of the most exciting regions that a lot of scientists are trying to understand. For example, we know that many of the emissions coming from the center of these galaxies are often powerful enough to completely transform a galaxy, for example from an active galaxy to one that's no longer able to produce stars. And in some cases some of the emissions from these black holes are even powerful enough to completely strip planets of any possibility for life. And so this is something that to some extent might affect us as well. And to try to understand all of this and try to answer all of these questions, it's really important for the scientists to figure out how various black holes are able to transport and also transform various gases across the galaxy. For example, how exactly are these black holes fed, what happens to the gas as it sort of circulates around the black hole, and how is the gas transported across the galaxy afterwards. And more importantly, we might also understand how these supermassive giants are also formed. At the moment there is really no explanation for their formation. Obviously there are some explanations, but none of them are definitive or accepted by everyone. As a matter of fact, some of the black holes out there are way too massive. They really should not be possible, they should not exist. And so how exactly all of this happens is still a question we cannot answer. But because modern telescopes are still not perfect and they are still not powerful enough to actually see a black hole in real time, with the best picture of the black hole being this one right here by the Event Horizon Telescope taking a few years to produce, we're still sort of far from being able to actually physically see what happens in the center of a typical galaxy and how all of this influences the region in the galaxy afterwards. And that's essentially where supercomputers come and save the day. This is one of the simulations I've discussed in one of the previous videos that was created by the scientists showing us how various stars form. And this simulation was able to explain a lot of things about the formation of early stars and why stars, for example, are not very massive after they're created. In this case you can actually see how the stars tend to throw out a huge amount of mass during the early formation. And this was only possible to discover using these simulations. You can learn more about this in one of the previous videos. But explaining what happens in the region with black holes is a little bit more challenging. Mostly because the supercomputer has to suddenly put all of this mass, all of these particles into an extremely tiny part of space. The black holes are extremely dense and very small. But the scientists in this paper were able to figure it out and were able to actually do it. And in this case the scientists really wanted to understand how a lot of this gas flows and interacts with the black hole itself. They wanted to see all of this in real time. And they were able to do this showing us what most likely happens in the middle of most galaxies including our own galaxy, including the Milky Way. With the model itself showing us a lot of main processes happening in the center. And this is something that is almost impossible to see with a telescope right now. The M87 picture, for example, was only able to show us a tiny fraction of all of these activities happening in the center. But the challenge of the simulation is to apply the black hole feedback to the gas around it. 
essentially to see the interaction between the black hole itself and all of the gas coming from everywhere in the galaxy. And specifically here we're talking about very active galaxies, such as a typical quasar or a typical Cipher galaxy. And so here, this is the important part, trying to figure out how all of this interacts. And we kind of have ideas about it, but nothing concrete. But in order to simulate all of this as accurately as possible, the scientists focused on several major phenomena. For example, they considered the fact that the universe is expanding. They also considered the fact that even tiny particles of gas have mass, and all of this mass influences all of the other particles. And so everything in there interacts with everything else. And this is one of the reasons why the black hole in the center right there you can kind of see is orbiting in a kind of a circular motion. It's not just staying right in the middle. All of the mass around it influences its orbit and sort of pulls at the black hole too. And so because of this it wobbles around and is not entirely in the center. At the same time, similar to the other simulation from Starforge right here, they consider the effects from the stars, specifically the stellar wind pressure, which also influences how the gas is distributed in the center of a typical galaxy. And then sometimes, once in a while, certain stars will go supernova, and this will also create a lot of pressure, which will also move gas in different directions. So all of this is technically happening in the simulation right there, even though it's sort of invisible. A lot of this is the mathematical formula behind the simulation itself. However, the only component not included in the simulation, which I think will be probably included in the next one, is the feedback from the black hole itself, which is actually quite important. Mostly because today we know that the black hole, as it sort of absorbs the mass and as it starts to create a lot of different interaction around itself, will actually start producing a lot of galactic winds, which are sort of visible in the simulation here, and will also produce astrophysical jets as well. Both of these will have separate effects on the galactic gas. For example, the galactic wind will generally heat up the gas in a galaxy, preventing these stars from forming. At the same time, the very powerful astrophysical jets will generally cause some of the gas to slow down and to fall back into the galaxy, sort of recirculating a lot of the material and thus increasing the production of stars in certain regions. So there is a bit of a feedback mechanism that was not included in the simulation. Nevertheless, there have been a lot of really intriguing discoveries. For example, there is an effect from the galactic spiral arms. The arms that are usually present in most spiral galaxies. And it looks like the spiral arms in this case, because of the higher density inside and thus more gravitational attraction, will actually cause some of the gas to sort of slow down in certain regions of the galaxy, which then causes this gas to fall into the center of the galaxy, suggesting that the spiral arms play a very important role in feeding the black hole, which is kind of symbolic and I guess somewhat ironic. The galactic arms are feeding the galactic mouth, the black hole in the center. And the discovery of this particular effect is very intriguing. It means that a galaxy that might possess more arms might actually have bigger black holes with a lot more activity in the center. So there might be a correlation between the galactic arms and of course the size of the black hole. The simulation also showed us that for the most part the gas that falls into the center is usually relatively cool compared to the gas that moves around in other regions. And most of the activity in the central region is mostly dominated by the rotation not really from any turbulence from, for example, supernova, and not really from the increase in pressure and temperature. And so as you can see right here, the spin, the rotation itself, seems to be the most important attribute in this particular region. The other intriguing discovery was in regards to the star formation in the central region. Surprisingly, in the region approximately 30 light years away from the center, as much mass is used to produce new stars as is absorbed by the black hole. And so the star formation and various effects from star formation, including of course the effects observed in this other simulation, seem to play a really important role in the central region close to the black hole. And so here we might also expect a lot of these similar events where a lot of gas is being recycled, which then recirculates and redistributes gas across wider regions. And in some of the closest regions to the black hole, specifically within about 3 light years away, the star production can be so extreme that it actually creates more light than would be otherwise produced by some of the other effects. And so the center of a typical galaxy might actually have a lot of stars being produced at all times. With a lot of gas mixture, gas distribution, and a lot of energy produced from just this effect alone. Not even including the effects from the accretion disk or from the black hole absorbing the gas. 
But the other discovery is of course the actual motion of the black hole. It moves quite a lot as you can see. As a matter of fact, it seems to move approximately 30 light years in just about 100,000 years or so, which is quite a lot of motion and also means that these objects are not necessarily stationary and do migrate and move around depending on the mass distribution of a typical galaxy. While at the same time, as you can see, a lot of gas also forms rotational structures. This is not an accretion disk, this is just a gas spinning along in a very stable formation. All of this is only visible in this particular simulation. But not necessarily in the same plane as the rest of the galaxy. As a matter of fact, it's sort of misaligned in this case with the galactic disk. And so this is something that's possibly expected from many different galaxies and many different black holes out there. But I guess one of the most impressive parts of the simulation is the total resolution possible in this case. This is, as of today, approximately 1000 times more precise or basically better resolution than was ever possible before. With some of the previous simulations like this one right here from the Illustrious project not being able to show as much activity and as much detail as this particular simulation from the scientists whose paper you can find in the description below. But there were obviously some other discoveries as well. For example, they discovered that the galaxy only stays active for a very brief moment, roughly around 2 million years in total. During that time, the central black hole would consume approximately one-tenth of the mass of the Sun and would obviously release a tremendous amount of energy through various astrophysical jets and through galactic winds. But during that time, a lot of the gas on the inside would slowly move away creating a kind of a cavity in the center, and because of this it's usually followed by a relatively calm period of several hundred million years or possibly even a billion years. And this is maybe what's happening with the Milky Way galaxy right now. Our galaxy seems to be going through some sort of a very quiet stage, but the active stage always returns. And so it's possible that the Milky Way galaxy will also return to its active stage anywhere from a few million to maybe hundred million years from now. And during those most active stages, for roughly a few thousand years, the galaxy becomes extremely bright, it becomes a quasar. During this time it consumes about 6 suns mass of gas every single year. So this is an extremely active period, but it doesn't last very long. And so quite a lot of different interesting discoveries, a lot of intriguing discoveries, but also something that will probably get advanced to the next stage once the scientists introduce the black hole feedback as well which will of course help them understand what else happens in typical galaxies when the black holes become active and how all of this helps the galaxies transform and change over time. Something that's somewhat important for us, especially because of all of the recent discoveries in regards to the Milky Way galaxy. For example, the discovery of Fermi bubbles and even smaller bubbles on the inside in the last few years helped us realize that our galaxy was definitely active a few million years ago. And so these types of simulations might allow us to predict when it's going to become active again, but more importantly how this might actually affect us as well. We don't know if any of this has effect on planet Earth. And if it does, we sort of might want to be ready for this. Anyway, so that's kind of all we know. It's a pretty cool simulation, somewhat interesting discoveries and a lot of really interesting ideas, something I'm hoping the scientists will expand on in the next version of the simulation. But until then, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out the paper and the simulation in the description below. Subscribe if you still haven't. Share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. And maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow. And as always, bye bye.